Hello guys, welcome back. My name is Andrei. Uh, today will be my second video about PyScript. Uh, previous video got quite a lot of attention. Uh, I got many questions and uh, I thought let's uh, uh, do one more video about PyScript, more detail, more advanced, more in-depth. And I'll explain <coughs> uh, different things, how you could get started with PyScript. And I'll explain what I learned about it and how I built my own small application and yeah hopefully this will give you a great great uh, head start to start your own development uh, because it's i believe there are quite many use cases where um, you could benefit from the pipe script because it allows to run python code inside the browser without uh, calls to the server and this is especially very useful when you have data centric application and when you need to process large sets of data on client side and display data in dashboards, charts, tables, and so on. And you also could implement data entry application if you if you want. You could grab user inputs, process input, and based on that input do some logic and things like that. Okay, so let's let's see how it works. Let's jump into um, my uh, screen and first of all, this is the uh, GitHub, GitHub repo with the sample application that I'll be talking today. I'll post a link to this application below the video. Uh, and it's extremely basic. There is a single HTML file which contains all the PyScript implementation plus there's a, a local, um, a separate local model, uh, chart uh, py. And this is the Python script that we are referring from the HTML file. Uh, this is just done for demonstration purpose to show you that you could, uh, if uh, the logic is, is uh, complex, there's lots of code, you could split uh, split the code into multiple py uh, Python scripts, and then you could uh, integrate those scripts into the HTML and uh, uh, call them, uh, call the logic, call the function from the, from the, from the PyScript tag. And first of all, let's look how the application uh, runs and how it looks like. So uh, let me open application and this is just HTML file hosted on uh, github.io and it's nothing else. So you don't need to do any server site or whatever, uh, any server site logic. Uh, it just all loads in browser. This is uh, the first version of PypeScript. Uh, it's experimental and you can expect some bugs and uh, obviously there'll be new features implemented as, uh, as uh, going along and performance will be improved and so on. Now this, uh, you should expect a wait time when you uh, just open the application. There's a wait time because it needs to load um, WSM infrastructure and initialize everything, initialize the Python uh, infrastructure which will support um, your application runtime within the browser. Okay. But as soon as application is, is loaded, it, it runs very fast. So this is the uh, sample application. So what they built is uh, one uh, data entry field where you could uh, enter uh, horsepower and filter horsepower by this number. So it will filter if you enter like, uh, for example, 150, it will filter out and show uh, cars with horsepower below 150. This is how it works. We see the chart was updated uh, with this new <coughs> uh, horsepower uh, value and table was updated as well. So if we uh, do ordering here and we order by horsepower, we see um, starting 149, which is less than uh, 150. And if we go and uh, like, let's say we go and decrease. Yeah, we see one by one how fast uh, how, how fast it's updating chart and, and table. Uh, let's see. Now let's go to 140 and yeah, it's, it happens instantly. So uh, because it all runs on the client side. So when, once you change the value chart and table data is uh, uh, just uh, updated at the same time when you click. Now I We'll put 34, 33, and table and chart is updated. Now 32, now 130, and it's updated. It's so nice that I just love to play and see how it updates instantly. And I love I love how quick Python works in, in the browser in this case. 
And the good thing is that chart, for example, and table, uh, both uh, components also uh, coming uh, not from PipeScript directly, but from Python library called uh, Panel. And uh, chart as well is uh, some sort of sub-library of, of, of Panel. And um, table uh, is also coming from Panel. And I'll show you later in the code, um, you implement um, API for those UI components with Python, but it seems on runtime when uh, uh, those objects are loaded in the browser, uh, there is some intermediate uh, JavaScript layer implemented uh, also uh, with panel library, and it helps to render this Python stuff in the browser with the JavaScript helper libraries. But you don't uh, touch those libraries, you just uh, need to import the libraries, those JavaScript libraries in uh, HTML, and that's all. All the logic you do is in Python. Okay, so now let's close that and let's uh, switch to the source code. So this is the HTML file and this is a helper uh, Python script, which I created just for demonstration purpose. Uh, this application is very simple and I don't need to uh, split any logic and move it outside to separate file, but just to demonstrate and prove that it works, I created this uh, separate script and uh, included it into, in, into the main HTML file. Okay, so first of all, you have a standard uh, HTML page structure. Uh, we get the head. And here we need to uh, refer to uh, several uh, CSS files and JavaScript files. So because I'm <clears throat> using uh, this uh, out-of-the-box UI, which displays a header, and uh, there's some uh, other uh, styling for fonts and so on, I'm uh, referring to uh, Bootstrap UI. And I got this um, uh, set of CSS files and JavaScript uh, references. It's not uh, out of my, it, it's not I just invented or, or whatever I, I created myself. I took that from the example from the PyScript. If you go to the uh, PyScript uh, GitHub, uh, they have examples and you can check different uh, use cases there. So this is from where I grabbed the, uh, this example with the includes for CSS and JavaScript. I'll put a reference to uh, GitHub uh, for the PyScript below the video as well. Okay, and over here we get um, JavaScript um, helper libraries are uh, included uh, mainly to render uh, panel UI and charts. So we get Vega um, helper libraries are uh, required to render charts, and this is a tabulator uh, from uh, from panel. Uh, tabulator li uh, helper library helps to render the table. And these libraries are required as well to, um, uh, to be able to render UI from, uh, from those uh, PyScript widgets. So as you see, uh, uh, PyScript and JavaScript plays uh, together very well. And it's not that uh, I saw online some people thinking that PyScript is a replacement for JavaScript and so on. No, uh, both PyScript and JavaScript um, are working fine together and you need to uh, use JavaScript to render, to, in order to render uh, content, content from the PyScript and so on. Yeah, and two uh, essential includes are for PyScript uh, GS uh, itself and for PyScript CSS. So if you, if you want to build like very minimum uh, Hello World application, then these two includes are fine. You don't need uh, other includes just to build very small basic application without any UI, just uh, if you want to render just some text and, uh, and that's all. Then, then over here we refer to uh, Python models. Uh, there is a standard set of Python models includes with PyScript and you could um, check this list of models from uh, this link from uh, PyScript GitHub repo. Uh, not uh, all uh, models that are around are uh, included uh, with PyScript, but if you want to include one, you could open um, a PR request. Um, and yeah, you, you could follow the, the link from the PyScript um, GitHub. Uh, they explain everything, how you could open PR request and so on, and uh, maybe a model that you need will be included as well. But uh, Right now, this is a quite large set of uh, models uh, that are included already and uh, unlikely that, uh, probably not very likely that you would need uh, some something extra, but yeah, anyway, depends. And this is the, the way how you include your custom local models. So this one is a chart uh, uh, Python script. 
which I implemented myself locally, and is a helper function get chart, which constructs a chart object and returns it. And then I'm including reference to this uh, local model over here through paths, like that, and uh, everything is wrapped into the py uh, env tag. So head is done, and then we go to the body, and in this section we define UI structure. So we got um, like a, a navigation uh, header which just displays a title and uh, it comes with the blue color. And then uh, below we got uh, UI structure. So we got uh, like a one column and there's a three rows, three divs, and uh, we got search, uh, chart, and table. So search will have a uh, uh, entry for the horsepower, then we got the chart, and we got the uh, uh, table where results are displayed. And finally, the main thing we got the Pi script, uh, Pi script tag, and uh, identification is very important here. Uh, the Python code, which is within Pi script tag, should start just immediately on the left. Uh, you should not uh, try to move it to the right or do some other kind of formatting because uh, otherwise, when you run the page, you'll get the error in the log saying that uh, there's a problem with identification and so on. Uh, so this is standard Python thing. We import um, uh, help libraries that we need to render chart, render table, and render um, uh, this input field. And first one is the horsepower, and we're using, um, as I mentioned, we're using a Python uh, panel library, P, uh, PN, so it comes from here, from this import. And we create a widget, uh, which is um, implements input of type integer, and we got default value to 130. There's a step uh, to increment or decrement, start with zero and end. And this this uh, out of the box renders um, this UI input field. And I'll put a reference to this library panel library below the video as well, so you could refer and. Uh, you could refer to the API of this library. It allows to create lots of stuff, um, lots of data entry, uh, functionality tables and charts and so on. Okay, and then we define a column uh, also from panel using panel library. And we define over here the title and to say that uh, we'll put a horsepower um, field into the column and this means it will be displayed uh, label will be displayed on top and then the input field uh, will be displayed below that uh, below the label okay then we got um, cars data set this is the standard data set that comes from uh, from here from the Viga data sets and this is um, a python uh, pandas data frame over here we operate so we don't need to do any complex uh, data transformation using JavaScript, we just uh, because we are working within uh, PyScript uh, tag, we tag, we operate directly with Python objects, so we operate with um, uh, <coughs> with the pandas data frame over here. Then we create uh, using um, uh, the same panel library, we create the table, uh, we set pagination, and as a value for this table, we specify pandas uh, data frame cars. And that's all. This this is how we get the table. We don't need to do anything else. Then uh, UI will render table out of the box. This is great. And next thing, we define a chart uh, also from the panel library. And we here we call a helper function that comes from uh, from this local model chart dot py, and we create a chart structure. Uh, we define which uh, uh, attributes we want to display and return back the uh, chart object and assign it uh, to the chart which uh, is being constructed by the panel. Okay, so we got the table, we got the chart and we got input field to search. And the next thing, uh, because when we change the search value for the horsepower, we want to get this value and uh, use it to filter out the chart and uh, table. So we need to, to react, we need to create some event which would react to the user action uh, when user is changing um, uh, filter value. So for that, uh, this um, annotation from panel library depends and we say that we want to call update UI function when horsepower um, field is changing. And, they, and it's able automatically detect when uh, UI field is changing, when value is changed in this uh, filter. Uh, and then based on that, update UI function will be invoked. 
And we do uh, two things over here in this function. First one, we update the chart. Second, we update table. And <clears throat> uh, we we are not modifying uh, original cars uh, data frame. What we do, <clears throat> we are just filtering out uh, cars data frame and returning the, the filtered data. And original data frame stays the same. And this is standard uh, Python pandas uh, syntax over here is used to uh, filter data frame. Uh, this is just by the horsepower attribute. Uh, if uh, uh, if the value of the horsepower is less than the uh, value from the filter, then we return it back, otherwise not. And yeah, it's uh, it's basic and it's following um, Pandas uh, syntax and it works out of the box in PyScript, which is great. And the final thing <clears throat> we are using, um, uh, we need to map somehow, we need to tell uh, HTML what uh, what we want to display in uh, search, uh, search section, in chart section and in table section. And uh, first of all, we say that in search div over here, we will display search. And search is um, our uh, column from the panel library. Then next one is chart. Uh, so in chart div, we display chart. So this is a chart that comes from the panel library. And in table div over here, we display table. And table is also an um, object from the panel library, which renders, uh, renders a table. So this is how you do mapping uh, between objects uh, from PyScript that you want to display in HTML div. And then, then <clears throat> uh, the object uh, content is automatically pushed to the div and displayed. OK, and I'm using uh, here go uh, live, live server basically to test this uh, index page on my own machine without deploying it anywhere. And I just uh, click it, run, and because it's a static uh, HTML page, it opened instantly uh, without any deployment. And now it just loads, uh, if, you, if you click uh, JavaScript console, let's see, yeah, so, uh, it shows that application is loaded, and it, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, it takes a few moments to uh, load to for initial load because it it loads all this WSM infrastructure and uh, Python environment to be able to run PyScript uh, logic. But as soon as it started, it's fast, and this it was the same like the HTML file uh, which is deployed on GitHub IO and which one. Uh, you could test, uh, for example, I can say filter out by um, horsepower here and chart data and table data is updated. Okay, so um, yeah, this is what I wanted to show you and um, hopefully it was useful and yeah, I think uh, PyScript is a great breakthrough for the uh, Python development in the browser for serverless Python development. And stay tuned uh, for more uh, interesting Python use cases from me. And uh, yeah, see you next time. Bye.